Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Read a Game of Thrones. My name is Arkeem and today we're going to be talking about the very first Tyrion viewpoint chapter, which is chapter 9. Let's get into it. Alright, some of the details of the Let's Read. There are spoilers in this video. I read the story off camera, but then I do commentary and analysis on camera. Sometimes I record my face and sometimes I give you this PowerPoint presentation. I'm still trying to decide which one works the best and maybe sometime, or eventually I will kind of have an overlay of me talking, a face cam if you will, um, with the PowerPoint in the background. But I am still learning. Um, this, is, like I said, is the very first Tyrion Viewpoint chapter and it's chapter 9. You can look down below in the description uh, for more information. And sorry I've been gone for a little while um, <laughs> to all five of my subscribers. <laughs> um, yeah, I just have gotten really busy at work. And I do have a 9 to 5, so this is a second thing for me that I'm doing. Right now I'm doing this for fun. So let's get into it without further ado. So I usually break down uh, the beginnings of my videos by talking about the who, what, when, where, why, um, and then do some plot points. But instead, this time, uh, because of the way the chapter is laid out, I'm going to be bringing you Tyrion and the world. We get a lot of interactions between Tyrion and other characters and how he sees the world and how other characters see the world. So through the chapter, which is also the shortest chapter, probably because, uh, I don't know if he did this on purpose, but it mirrors Tyrion's height, if you will. But we're going to be talking about it based on his interactions with the characters. And for starters, we see he interacts with a character named Septon Chael. Septon Chael seems to be some sort of uh, intellectual official. And um, through his interaction with Tyrion, or through Tyrion's interaction with Septon Chael, we learn that Tyrion is an educated individual, um, probably even more educated than this individual who is uh, some, you know, highly intellectual official. Um, um, we learn that whatever a Septon is, we don't really know that yet in the story, but we learn that the Septon wears the crystal of his order, swinging wildly on its silver chain. So that must be something that is important that will probably come up in the story later. We see that Tarian, uh, Tyrion, <laughs> Tarian, we see that Tyrion has his interaction with his nephew Joffrey, um, and, uh, the Starks can count past six, unlike some princes I know. And what we get from this interaction is that Joffrey just doesn't seem to care about other people. He only cares about himself and maybe his family, but he seems to be this sort of stuck up little kid, right? Um, he is representative of his age. Kids at that age tend to only be sort of self-centered, and Joffrey certainly is that, where Tyrion cares about other people. And this is when we get the, uh, one of the best scenes in the whole book is where Tyrion slaps Joffrey due to his lack of empathy that he shows towards, uh, the particularly Bran Stark who has, uh, fallen, right? We talked about the last chapter already, so we already know that he was pushed by, uh, Tyrion, or sorry, by Jaime Lannister off of the tower, thrown off the tower, presumably to his death, and uh, Joffrey just is not, he just doesn't care. Um, really hate Joffrey, he is such a jerk, <laughs> and Tyrion lets him have it with a slap. Joffrey says, really rude things in reference to Bran, such as, at least he dies quietly, it's the wolf that makes the noise, and for someone to be a royal official is just so rude to say, and he's talking to his bodyguard, Sandor, Sir Sandor Clegane, he even, uh, refers to Sandor when he says, send a dog to kill a dog, when he's joking about sending Sandor Clegane to kill, um, Bran, as of now, unnamed dire wolf. Um, and we, uh, we know that Sandor Clegane wears the hound helmet, and we'll talk maybe a little bit more about that. He is referred to as the hound, and that's what, um, Joffrey means by sending a dog to kill a dog, and he ends up by saying, the Stark boy is nothing to me. How rude. Uh, we also see that Tyrion interacts with Sandor Clegane. Um, Sandor is able to joke with Tyrion freely, you know, he has this bit about, oh, is there someone here? Uh, <laughs> I don't see anyone. <laughs> and then Tyrion's like, well, look down. And he's like, oh, I, Sir Lannister, I didn't record, I didn't see you here. Because, you know, Tyrion is so short. He is a dwarf. I mean, when we get the Black Hound helmet, which is described in the chapter. 
Now, moving on, we also see Tyrion's interaction with his sister Cersei. Um, they are going to eat a meal. Um, it has been four days since Bran has been pushed off the building by Jaime and Cersei. Um, and uh, they're going to eat a meal. So he talks to his nephew Joffrey and the Hound on his way. He sends Joffrey to send his respects to uh, the Starks while he is on his way to uh, meet his siblings for breakfast. So we see this interaction between Tyrion and Cersei which is particularly interesting because Cersei and Tyrion are twins so they have a very close relationship and for this to be a trinity of siblings we get to see this interaction between Tyrion and Cersei, Tyrion and Jaime, Jaime and Cersei if you will. Um, so his sister peered at him with the same expression of faint distaste she had worn since the day he was born. So clearly Cersei doesn't like Tyrion. She looks at him with distaste or an expression of faint distaste. You know she sort of rises her nose at him maybe it's because he is a midget i don't know if we know this at this point i can't remember if we know that uh Tyrion's mother dies in childbirth if so i've already warned about spoilers but we learned that his mother dies in childbirth and she could be holding on some resentment for that um and we also see that cersei and jamie they don't care about bran but again we already know why and we know why it is in their best interest for bran not to actually be alive he is currently in a coma um but Tyrion being the intellectual character that he is notices that Cersei and Jaime have this glance hey, when he says that Bran might still make it he might still be alive they look at each other and Tyrion notices that and that's all that comes of that um, now we also through Tyrion chapter we learn more about Bran we learn that his back and legs are broken um, you know and it's really unfortunate because Bran loves to climb um, if Bran is our hero this is certainly certainly going to change everything that he knows um, it is probably uh, since the prologue when we actually see what walkers on the page this moment is probably one of the most uh, physical tension rising like we have the the decisions that character that characters need to make you know does Ned go choose to go south with the king will Ned let Jon Snow join the Night's Watch on the wall but this time there is not necessarily a choice um, Bran has no choice he is uh, um, he, 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 he has he does now have a broken back and he doesn't have broken legs and he may he might not wake up again but given that he is a viewpoint character you know we know that um, he, he will probably have another viewpoint chapter because they you know they do repeat um, but he will never walk again um, Tyrion says on page 91 um, we know that his wolf um, like I said is unnamed really cares about him based on the way he howls and cries out for him and we finally learn that his full name is Brandon um, which is kind of relevant because um, Ned lost his older brother Brandon Stark uh, too soon and he may now also lose his son who is named Brandon so there's this parallel between Ned's older brother Brandon and then this Bran uh, he probably goes by Bran to sort of individualize his name and take some ownership over it um, but then also a movie named after Brandon the Builder um, going back a little bit further because we know that Brandon the Builder was one of their earliest ancestors um, yeah So unlike Tyrion and Cersei, Tyrion and Jaime have a have a good relationship, it would seem. Um, where Tyrion and Cersei have a lot of friction in their relationship, Tyrion and Jaime seems to they seem to have a relationship of brotherly love. Only Jaime had ever shown him the smallest measure of affection or respect, and for that, Tyrion was willing to forgive him most anything. Um, but then we, we learned through their conversation a little bit more about Jamie. He would kill his own son as opposed to giving his son a chance to live a life as a cripple. Um, Jamie does not think that Bran should be, but they, Jamie thinks that Bran should just be killed peacefully in his sleep. Even if the boy does live, he will be a cripple. Worse than a cripple. A grotesque. Give me a clean death. Um, I, I, this is significant. This is really significant because even though Tyrion and Jamie have this amazing relationship we we know that Tyrion has lived his entire life feeling like a bastard we've already had his conversation between uh, b between Tyrion and Jamie or sorry Tyrion and Jon so we know that he has sort of lived his entire life as a dwarf feeling like a bastard like an unwanted child and we know that Cersei 
doesn't respect him. We know that Joffrey doesn't respect him. Even someone who's not a part of the royal family, Sir Clegane, the Hound, can easily make jokes at Tyrion's expense. So what we get here is something that could potentially really hurt Tyrion like no one else can because uh, Tyrion does care for Jaime in that you know they have a closer relationship than, than Tyrion does with anyone else. But then Tyrion answers, speaking for the grotesques, I beg to differ. Death is so terribly final, while life is so full of possibilities. So he shrugs it off and then defends the grotesque. So Tyrion will definitely, probably, definitely, probably, definitely, probably, <laughs> Tyrion will definitely become a voice uh, for the the crippled people. The- the crippled characters and the grotesque characters and the characters like John who are bastards and who need some defending. Hopefully I'm not being too offensive, but you know, <laughs> it's hard to be 100% politically correct all the time, especially when you're reading Game of Thrones. Um, but we also see Tommen. Um, did I misspell Tommen there? I can't remember how to spell Tommen and it looks wrong to me for some reason. But uh, he doesn't want Bran to die. He's a sweet little boy who doesn't want Bran to die. So we kind of like Tommen as readers. I think um, is presented that way. We should also uh, feel a little bit sympathetic towards Tommen and Princess Marcella because they seem to be two uh, beautiful kids in a family that is willing to push a little boy off a building to keep a secret. She had all of her mother's beauty and none of her nature, which Tyrion thinks is a good thing if we are to believe in Tyrion's point of view. And probably all the other characters that we've seen so far have this negative point of view of Cersei. Cersei is really characterized as a bitch. John doesn't like her. Catelyn Stark doesn't like her. Ned Stark hates all the Lannisters. Um, <laughs> she even doesn't like Tyrion. And as a character so far, I really like Tyrion, which makes me not like Cersei even more. She's just really antagonized in the first few chapters. Um, I don't believe she has a viewpoint chapter in this first book, but in some of the later books, she definitely has. And I cannot wait to talk about those to see if our opinions of her can change change. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. So lastly, just to end the video, this is a shorter video. I'm gonna try to eventually get the videos all down to 15 minutes, but uh, I wanna do a quick overview of the character. What do we learn about Tyrion? Why is Tyrion a viewpoint character and why is he important? Why does this chapter need to happen? And what does it do to progress the plot? Um, Unlike some of the other characters, Tyrion might not as easily be identifiable as a hero. You know, he isn't really having a call to adventure that's noticeable but um, we will learn if we learned already or we will learn eventually that he does have sort of a mysterious parentage and he is maybe set up later to have someone tell him what the father but from what we get from this chapter he's not really presented as a hero so it's interesting to see this character as opposed to all the other characters who we've had viewpoint chapters for um, who could be heroes or heroines if you will Um, but Tyrion doesn't necessarily have that as much yet so it'll be interesting to see how his character grows and changes but he is a representative of knowledge and intellect Tyrion is very smart he's very perceptive he is a great character to follow because we learn a lot we learn a lot about other people and we learn a lot about the world and I think we're going to continue to learn more as his character is the viewpoint character to teach us things just like how Catelyn Stark's character so far has been the character that has given us our knowledge of the religious goings-on of the worlds, if you will. Um, Tyrion's character will be that for just general knowledge and intellect. Jon Snow's character, and maybe Benjamin Stark's character, will probably let us know what's happening in the North once he goes to the Wall. And then we have Daenerys letting us know what's happening um, east, no, east, yeah, e- east of the, the Narrow Sea. I always have to do the never eat sour watermelon to know my cardinal directions because I'm not an adult. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Tyrion represents knowledge and intellect. Uh, when we first see him, he is reading about the changing of the seasons as summer is coming to an end. So he's he's getting more learned, right? He's learning more about what is happening in the world, especially as the season's about to end. This is a really big deal for Westeros. He read all night, not much room for sleeping. Um, and uh, we learn a little bit more about this book, Armidon's, Ar- Ar- Armidon's Engines of War is a rare Targaryen scroll, unless I misread that, which is probably likely. My sweet brother, you wound me. You know how much I love my family. 
does Tyrion know what they did? We see how smart he is when he's questioning, well not necessarily questioning, but when he makes his comment at the very end of the chapter to Jamie. He seems to, based on seeing that look, um, you know, he seems to have picked up on everything with just a few short glances in this one breakfast conversation. No, he is not just physically funny, but he is very witty. Um, that kind of goes with his knowledge and intellect. And we've already seen this a little bit with his conversation with John in a uh, cha few chapters earlier, but he's not just physically funny. What, me, Seldon? The holes would go begging from dawn to Castle and Rock. No, I just want to stand on top of the wall and piss off the edge of the world. That's <laughs> something that he says is very funny. Um, now, at this point, we don't actually know if this is just something he says to be funny or if he really does sleep around a lot. You know, we when we first see him alone, he's reading. Um, <laughs> yeah, something about the howling of a wolf took a man right out of his here and now and left him in a dark force of the mind, running naked before the pack. I don't know that line was supposed to be funny, but I found it pretty, pretty. <laughs> he gave me a few chuckles. Um, another him was a thought too dreadful to contemplate. Uh, he says when discussing not wanting a twin like his siblings Jamie and Cersei have within each other well all right everybody thank you all so very very much um i said the video was going to be 15 minutes and here we are at 16 minutes but i really appreciate you guys for watching and sticking with me please remember to like this video go to my facebook page and like that subscribe to my channel if you can follow me on the twitter um i tweet every so often um i'm gonna get better about twitter i really need to start building the social media and getting more active um and as the audience grows as you guys start watching more and more and interacting please comment so I can talk to you guys about the book you know that's one of the main goals of the channel is to interact with the audience to interact with you guys to learn from you guys and to discuss the books you know and have a lot of fun with it so thanks again for watching see you next time mm -hmm.